Hello again and welcome to another Warhammer 40k Mordian Glory video. Now before we get into today's video, I think it's important that we all acknowledge the greatest drink in the world, Iron Brew. Iron Brew, please sponsor me. I'm, I'm putting your product in my videos quite a lot. Hopefully Iron Brew will sponsor me. The greatest drink in the world according to both emperors, the two-armed and four-armed variety. That's right, still spatting the heresy. After having a delicious swig of the Emperor's own nectar. That sounds a bit wrong. We will get into today's video. So, gather round, conscripts. Gather round, gather round. General Mordian Glory wants to tell you a story. Wants to take you down memory lane. That's right, guys. We're going to be doing another sort of painting session story time kind of thing. I will be painting in this one. But we will be travelling down memory lane, taking a look at where the Imperial Guard has come from and sort of it's uh, appreciating how the game of 40k has evolved. That's right guys, we're going to be taking a look at Codex Imperial Guard. The first proper Codex they had. Now I know some people were throwing their hands up and saying Oh, Golden Glory, what about the second edition codex? Like the Rambo people on front of it. Well, that is a good point. But this codex here, first third edition one, because there were two in third edition for the Imperial Guard. One was early third, one was late third. This is the first proper Imperial Guard codex because first and second edition, well, Rogue Trade and second edition, 40k were almost like a completely different game system and this third edition was when 40k was rebooted a lot like in 8th edition really when you think about it and uh, this was the codex that Imperial Guard commanders were given to fight the enemy with this is earlier than the codex that many of you will be familiar with many old timers will be familiar with this one which was the late 3rd early 4th edition codex that's probably the codex that was the most popular guard codex for a long time at the, at the time I should say that was when plastic cadians were introduced but we're not looking at that one that one that one's positively modern in comparison to this old tome so first let's take a look at this thing well firstly I want to say that is probably some of the best codex art Games Workshop has ever had on the front cover of a book. I mean, I like the new codexes in terms of like substance. There's a lot in there, but the codex art doesn't really do it for me. Whereas this codex art is just incredible. I mean, look, that's a proper, that, that, there's nothing more in Pearl Guard than that front cover. Guards, but shoulder to shoulder in a trench. There's a Proper mangled dead dude. Look at that guy's face, it's all messed up. He's got bullet holes in the front of his flak armor. He's completely screwed. He's dead. He's, go He's gone. And you've got guards and fighting shoulder to shoulder. Not sure what they're shooting at. There's definitely another dead guy down here, though. You know, this is. A and then there's all these guys up here. And you can see this firing line. There's like this guy with a flamer. Just looks like he's blazing away into some orcs there. You've got reinforcements running up here. You've got a priest in the background. Someone's been crucified. We're not sure why, but he has been. This is Imperial Guard. This, this, is, this is Imperial Guard. Imagine walking into Games Workshop and seeing that as your front cover for your army. You'd be like, yes, sold. These guys, I want them. They were very, very cool. Now, just taking a look at the back, you can see... It's a little different. You've got pictures. Well, actually, it's pretty similar to what we have uh, these days. Obviously, you get your picture. You get a bit of description of what's in the book. Uh, and what I really like is this. This little thing they had on the back of every codex, which was um, a little quote from someone in there, from someone in that army. Like, so in this case, it's Commissar Yarrick addressing new recruits. Imperial Guardsmen, you are the last line of defense against the alien hordes that threaten our Imperium. Each one of you brave warriors is part of a vast fighting force that will be called upon to serve in the eternal war. 
You will fight on countless battlefields on a thousand different worlds across the galaxy. And whether you fight in our great crusading armies or serve with the smallest garrison, you must be proud to sacrifice your life to save humanity from its enemies. See? Boom! That that doesn't get you that doesn't get you wanting to grab a lasgun and shoot a googly eyed monster, then I don't know what will. As you can see, this codex is incredibly thin. There's like fifth less than fifty pages in this whole thing. It's forty eight pages essentially. So this is a th this is how thin codexes used to be. It's like a centimeter thick. If that. So Oh, and I should say there's no colour. That's the first thing you'll notice, there is no colour in any of this, in terms of the artwork. All the artwork is black and white. You have some pictures of the units, but that's it. So, let's take a look at this. Let's go back to the front page. So this is the first thing you get. A nice big uh, sort of front picture, you've got some... Uh, Pictures of some different armies. So you've got some Katachans up here, which at the time are the metal style Katachans. It's pretty cool. And you've got some Talon Desert Raiders against the Eldar. And look how old all these different models are. But look at that Vanquisher cannon. That, that still looks good. That still has withstood the test of time. And I always remember these bunkers up here, going back to the Katachan for a second. I always wanted some of these Imperial Guard bunkers. Still do, to be honest. And look at those Valhallans down there. But that's like. What you're looking at, especially in this army and this army, that's like a huge army for 40k at the time. That is huge. Like that is that is what you would that is what you would expect to see in a you know tournament game in third edition, like a what would we we would consider a two thousand point game. Now that's what you would have. When you look at it, that's pathetic in comparison to eighth edition standards. That's like what two Lehman Russes, a Chimera, a Hellhound. And a griffin, five vehicles, five vehicles, and then three heavy weapon teams. Guess that hasn't changed that much. And then four squads of infantry and some uh, some rattlings and, and like six squads of infantry, basically. I mean, that's that's what you imagine. If that's all you had to go into battle with. Imagine if you went to your next tournament, that's all you could take with you. That'd be crazy. I mean, that's considered like a vast collection. That is. So there you go, so there you've got some more cool artwork, you've got your uh, contents there, intro page, so you can see here, got a little bit, I love this quote at the top, you know, call yourself a guard when you are a little specimen, ah, newly recruited and still wet behind the ears, you know, I love that, I love that, you can just imagine some absolute grizzled NCO telling you that. And it goes on. This is this is all. This is what this was basically the summary of what the Imperial Guard was. Like this is the Imperial Guard. Why would you collect an Imperial Guard army? What's in this book? The army list, collection of modelling. Then you've got your guard regiments here. So there we go. But there's no rules. It's just a bit of background information on each regiment of renown. Like it's not like you got regiment traits back then. There were no regiment traits. It just gave you that's all that's all your background fluff you got on each on each regiment. Now you get pages and pages and pages and here you get a paragraph. So much slimmer. And that's pretty much it. That is your <laughs> that is your background fluff, guys. There you go, that's your background fluff. Bloody hell. Not a lot, is there? And you start getting into Infantry company army list. So it's back. So back then it was like you will be using, you know, an infantry company. Back then it was a, you. You know, you had a small force. The most you could take in a game. The most you could take was two HQ cho choice. Two HQ choices. Four troops. Six troops. Sorry. Three elites. Three fast attack. Three as well. That's all you could take. Imagine if the most you could take was like less than a battalion, guys by 8th edition standards. That's all you needed. That's what everyone got. That's what everyone did. Space Marine, Eldar, Tyranid, Imperial Guard, that's what everyone got. You got the Force Organization chart. And, look, don't get me wrong, I love 8th edition. I love the scale and um, the flexibility and the options that you get. But, uh, 
it's it's there are still wild imbalances in the game and there's factions which can abuse the hell out of detachments and people have being one of them and if I want to I can turn up to 2000 point game with a triple brigade triple brigade list <sighs> at least a double brigade list if I was taking if taking it seriously now you get left back then you got left in battalion Bit of, bit of a few rules here, special rules, so this is how your platoons work, so you didn't just get an infantry squad, you got each each troop choice was a platoon, each platoon was a command squad and two two uh, infantry units, and then you could you could take some extra units on top of that. Uh, yeah, there you go, loads of different, commissars, so commissars, uh, what happens is basically you kill your guy, you know, if you fail each test, the commissar kills someone, and then you roll it again, and if you fail it again and the commissar's killed, he's fragged. Basically the commissar was just a way of you getting a, a re-roll to your leadership. So there you go. A little bit more fluff, not a lot. A little bit more wording on what commissars are like. And then this is your Imperial Guard armory. So back in the day, um you had an armory and Characters could take two weapons, two weapon options basically, but they could take any of this. There were a few restrictions, but uh, but pretty much like only officers could take power and commissars could take power fists and power weapons. But uh, apart from that, yeah, you could have a veteran, you could have a veteran sergeant with a hell pistol if you wanted. You know, bolt pistol, three points, <laughs> that's madness by today's standards, isn't it? Absolute madness. But the bolt pistol was three points, but the bolt was only two points. Crazy. But that's but that's because back in the day, the bolt pistol gave you um, gave you extra attack and close combat. You were you shot with it. Uh, uh, I think that was it gave you an extra attack and close combat. That's what was good about it. I'm sure there was some other rules. And it was AP minus five, obviously, and all that kind of stuff. But um, yeah, then you've got your rules here. So you can see a lot of the weapons haven't changed. Auto cannon, range 48 inches, strength 7, two shots. Obviously the AP system's different these days. Bolt gun, 24 inch range, strength 4, rapid fire. You know, flame is a bit different, obviously, but still strength 4. Grenade launcher hasn't changed. Or, you know, if you have a look, like, none of our weapons have changed. The, the one that's changed the most is the ripper gun. And... Where is it? It was the hell gun. The hell gun. See, that's what your hotshot lads guns used to be, guys. Strength three, AP minus five, which by eighth edition standards would be AP dash, so they'd be worthless. But at best, you'd be AP minus AP minus one. Now they're AP minus two. So it's, you know, hell guns have really are now hot shots, and they've been really improved. But this is all the this is all the vehicles you got. This is it. You know, oh, you get your sentinel, but you don't get, there's no difference between armoured and, and scout sentinels, they're just a sentinel. You know, look at that. Crazy. Crazy, look at, that's, in, that's insane, I've never noticed before, look, the demolisher had an extra point of armour on the side, and the others, imagine you, ah, it's crazy, imagine if on the front, your Liam Russes were like toughness 8, but on the side they were toughness 7, or 6 in this case. That's insane. Then you get a description of what each thing does. So uh, flags uh, do a bit different now, um, but they're pretty. They're still the same. Medipacks. You just ignore the first wound, the first failed wound each turn. That's pretty cool. That's that will work really well. A little bit more fluff. This though is one of my favourite bits of artwork. Cadians versus Tyranids, Carnage at Fortress, Carcasson, the Ninth Cadian devastates High Fleet Scarabus. That is an incredible bit of artwork, that is. Absolutely insane. I just love the Commissar checking his timepiece while less than, you know, three feet away from him is a sergeant just, just charging in there with his chainsaw. You can see the fear on his face, like, oh my god, what am I doing? Yeah, you've got him in the background, you've just got these huge insects just killing everything and a titan but on the front line you've just got rank upon rank upon rank of infantry incredible and that's it now you're into the rules so you get a command platoon which is basically an HQ squad but look at the stats on these guys 
Oh, your, uh, your captain has two whole wounds, guys. And, you're, and he costs 55 points for, by himself. <laughs> it's just insane. You know, and you're, you're, you're colonel. You don't worry, you get an extra friggin' wound. <laughs> you know, for 70 points. You know, now Platoon Commander has four wounds. Uh, not Platoon Commander, uh, Company Commander has four wounds and it's 30 points. And it's just insane. Look at this, but you've got to use your leadership within 12 inches. So there were bubbles, but. and they were bigger. You take heavy weapon squads as part of your command platoon. So you'd have heavy weapon teams in your HQ section and heavy weapon teams in your heavy support section. Commissars, you could only take five commissars. They were 40 points each. You know, they came with a whopping two wounds and a LAS pistol, not a bolt pistol. You had to pay more if you want that sweet bolt pistol and close combat weapon. And how they worked is you had to start, you could, you didn't get to choose where your commissars went. They had to start at the top of the chain of command. So if you took a commissar, you had to go in your command squad first. And then you had another command squad, you had to go into that one. Although I think you could only take one command, you could only take one command squad back then, guys. Sorry. So your first commissar had to go with your company commander. Then you went on to your other officers if you had any in the in sort of your troop choices. Take a look at that. So then you'd have to go to your command section here, and then after that, you went to I think you went to a different. You went to like veteran sergeants, and finally you could end up in in a. Oh no, sergeant of your choice. Okay, fair enough. So it had to be your officers first and then your sergeant, basically. So if your commissar, if your HQ choice failed uh, leadership test, your commissar blew his brains out and took and took over command. It's incredible. Look, leadership 10 though, so you were, un you were likely to pass the test. Because so what happened is you rolled two dice and as long as you rolled underneath that leadership, you were fine. But imagine... Um, if you roll, you know, if you get an eleven or twelve, you can't hard just gets fragged, and and that's it. Incredible. But this is all the description you got of each unit. Oh, a little paragraph here. These are, are veterans. You could only take one veteran squad. That's it. I mean, that's pretty crazy. You go take one veteran. You could spend forty-five points to give the squad an officer, so that the squad had an officer. And he could take an additional equipment from the armory. So that's pretty cool. And you got battle honours, which I have no idea what they do, but they're from the 40k rule book. Stormtroopers, very different, 12 points per model. Stats are relatively similar though. And that's pretty cool. You had to take 10 of them though. No choice there. Like, so you're veterans, and you, you could take more than one squad of stormtroopers. Ogrins, they've changed, they're only toughness four back in the day, but they still had three wounds, which by the standards of 3rd edition was insane, considering your Terminators only had one wound. Bear that in mind. Rattling snipers tucked in at the top there. They've not changed all that much. 11 points per model, though, that's pretty pretty hefty. Infantry platoon. So you didn't just take one squad per troop choice. Your troop choice was a command section and two to five infantry squads in one troop selection, which is what made Imperial Guard so strong. Because like the most other um, factions would only get like three. Like you could take six. Most of the factions could only take six troop squads. So space you could get at most six tactical marines, whereas guardsmen could get. 300 infantry if they wanted to because they, they could take six infantry platoons and each one would have you could take five infantry squads but your command section was 35 points so that 35 points actually was, is quite interesting because it gets you your lieutenant and you get your four guardsmen with him as well so that's actually cheaper than by today's standards which is pretty cool um but the but the but the but the character but the uh, character is part of the squad, so he can just be killed. Like there's no character rule. There's no you you can't target a character because he's near. These guys could just be picked off. Now you have to pay for frag grenades back in the day. That's insane. But apart from that, it's very similar. One uh, two models can be armed. 
Oh, so two mods coming out of this, and then you can have a heavy weapon team. But you couldn't have four special weapons in one command squad. Infantry squads were 60 points back in the day, guys. 60 points. That's pretty insane. It's 20. It's 50 percent more than they are now. Uh, it's exactly the same. Uh, except for you could take everyone could take a lasgum back in the day. That's what people are still, you know, five editions later, people are still salty about that. <laughs> um, Flamer was only three points back in the day. Melt gun and plasma guns were the same. Grenade launchers were the same as these. That's because back in the day, the assault rule meant a lot. Was a lot different. I can't remember how it worked, but the grenade launcher was assault weapons, and that made them really important. I think it's because it, rapid fire weapons, if you stayed still, you got one shot at 24 inch range. Or if you moved, then you could only fire at 12 inch range, but you got two shots at 12 inch range. Whereas grenade launchers, they got one shot at 24 range. They got one shot and you could still move with them. So that's incredible. Heavy weapons back in the day, if you stayed still, you could shoot them. If you moved, you just couldn't shoot them. You just couldn't shoot them at all. Morsels were 15 points. That's the insane thing here. A mortar costs the same as an autocannon. It's pretty insane. Now the other thing you could do as a troop choice is you could take armoured fist squad. So for every platoon you could take, if you didn't want to take platoon after platoon after platoon, you could take a platoon and then an armoured fist squad, which is just a squad in a in a chimera. This is exactly the same thing. Uh, but look, you had to pay. So if you look, so these guys didn't get a sergeant as standard. And if you wanted to give them a sergeant, you had to pay 10 points. These guys, if you gave them a sergeant, they were, they were the, the veteran sergeant was 10 points here. They did come with the sergeant. The sergeant doesn't give you anything. Look, the basic sergeant doesn't do anything. And the veteran sergeant just gives you an extra attack. So back in the day, it was only if you paid 10 points, could you get an extra close combat attack. Chimera's, uh, obviously this is all different now completely. But they haven't changed that much, to be honest. You used to be able to shoot out the top of them, I reckon. You can carry 12 models. Maybe you couldn't shoot them out. I don't think you could shoot out the top back in 3rd edition. Fast attack. Hellhounds. Look at the, the Inferno Cannon was really wacky back in the day. Uh, so anyone who took any casualties from the Inferno Cannon had to fall back as if they'd failed a morale test. Units that... So, the unit is not actually broken and does not have to be good start this turn. It just, it just, they have to fall back. So if they get shot at by the, the, which back in the day, if you fell back, it was 2d6 shots. So if you took a casualty, you had to run away 2d towards your board edge, 2d6. And you, and you, re, you regrouped, you were back in the fight next turn, but that's incredible. Move and shoot is completely different back in the day. You only had, it, there was only, a, it didn't it, it didn't have a long range, it had an 8 inch range essentially, that's what the template was roughly. <sighs> and uh, if you moved over 6 inches you couldn't shoot face and forwards because the flames would wash back over you crazy. And it was very susceptible to blowing up, which it still is now. Sentinels, there was just the one variety. I think the scout scout was come. You could only take multi layers of heavy flame. That was it. It wasn't until uh, much later that you got more weapon options for the Sentinel. Uh, these ones, the scout was pretty cool. Uh, scout Sentinels use scout the head noise in the vanguard of the army. Traps in the sentinels of the army may be deployed at the start of the battle, even in scenarios where they could not normally be deployed. For example, if you were to defend it, had taken a whole mission, they sent it all set up at the start of the battle instead of being placed in reserve with the rest of the fast attack units. Ah, that's cool. And then you could make you still make your free move. So there were some scenarios where you had to put things in reserve, and Sentinels could just ignore that, which was quite powerful because it means you could, you could start off on more with, on the board than your opponent. Rough Riders pretty much have not changed. They're even the same points, which is insane. Rough Riders have not changed. And then we get the Lehman Rust Battle Tank. 140 points, so it's not that much more expensive. You can take... It must have a Battle Cannon. And you can take a Laz Cannon or a Heavy Bolt on the front. Heavy Bolt's only 5 points. 
you can take heavy bolts and flames on the side, and it can have all these upgrades. But that's it, it's not a lot. That's it. And then you've got your other two kinds of Lehman Rust, the Vanquisher, which could fire different shells. It could choose to fire a battle cannon shell or it could fire an anti-tank shell. Um, and it could that, that was really powerful. 2d6 for our penetration, add the scores together. Considering you, if considering if you penetrated the enemy's uh, armor, you would a lot of the time blow that vehicle up. That's why the armor value having armor 14 was so good because it meant that vehicles were difficult to blow up. 175 points though. <laughs> 120 points to the exterminator. So that's exact, exactly the same as it was back in the day. Demolisher, 150 points. So basically, the way I believe the uh, the wet the, the reason these are different points costs is because the weapons are t factored into their base points cost. Uh, and then look, this this guy, the Demolisher is a special boy because he could take lots of things on his side. He could take multi melted plasma cannons, not just heavy bolts, heavy flames. That's what made him special. He could take additional heavy ordnance on top of his very heavy ordnance. Basilisk, 100 points. If you wanted it to fire without line of sight, you had to pay 25 points for that. So you either fired it straight on or you could fire it going up, but you had to pay if you wanted to do that. Uh, but you had to guess, you had to guess the distance. That's insane. You had to, you literally had to, if you wanted to fire directly, you had to guess. And you had a minimum range of 36 inches, so no, you never, never bother with that basically back in the day. Griffin, you use a smaller blast template instead of the big one, but you got 2d6 plus 5 when <laughs> against bunkers, that's pretty cool, otherwise you just got a heavy mortar, and you got some special, that was it, that was it, that is all your unit choices guys, that is it, that's all your unit choices, so don't, <laughs> yeah. And then you've got a couple of special characters. You've got Lord Commander Sol and Macarius. You've got a lot of fluff on him. He got two pages of fluff and he was an absolute beast. His movement was something stupid. Uh, old war wounds, yeah. He had bad weapon skill and attacks because he might have he might have been suffering from his old war wounds. You got Commissar Yarek, he's still there. As always. A lot of his rule is force field is really wacky. Take a second to read that, guys. The force field is very wacky. Um, Iron World's pretty cool. Basically, every time he dies in a four plus, he gets back to his feet. So it's not as good as it is now. It's some ways it's better, some ways it's worse. Nork, a dead dog. Pretty much the original Ogre and Bodyguard. Then you got Colonel Schaffer's Last Chances, basically an additional squad of pretty wacky um, veterans, but to take Colonel Schaffer and 11 Last Chances, so a 12 man squad would cost you 291 points. Uh, <laughs> that's so shit. Colonel Schaffer got a plasma pistol, power weapon, and carapace armor, and then each one had a sp specific, specific loadout. So this guy had a LAS gun. This guy had a heavy bolter. This guy had a lads gun and a comlink. This guy had a lads gun and metal bombs. This guy got a plasma pistol and a power weapon. This guy got just a sniper rifle. He just got a bolt pistol. She got a missile launcher. He loaded for her. He got a metal gun and a scanner. And he just got a lads gun. And got two close combat weapons. That was what you paid two hundred. That's what you paid two hundred ninety-one points for. You got paid. You paid two hundred ninety-four points for a plasma pistol and a power one plasma pistol, like three power weapons roughly, and some las guns, a heavy bolter, a missile launcher, and a melter gun and a sniper rifle. I mean, that's insane. A little story for them. Then you got this. Then you got a little picture of different regiments of renown. Technical specs of like different Russes and Chimeras and scale. Some more artwork. A little bit more sort of fluff. 
And that was it, then you got some cool pictures guys. Pretty cool pictures. It's a good job they updated these Ogre models, I mean that guy just looks ridiculous. <laughs> but these are all like, this is cool. So this was a little description by the person that, that someone helped uh, in Games Workshop. And he was like, this is what you should, this is like a good base to start for your Imperial Guard Army. And to be fair, looking at that, that's a perfectly, you know, even by today's standards, that's a pretty respectable start. Take a couple of Liam Russes, take a couple of Chimeras, have a nice base of infantry, have some mobile units, have some specialists, some counterattacks, some, some snipers, have some heavy support, LAS cannon, missile launch, heavy bolters, have a good command section. This is advice that to this day, I would still give. Obviously the addition may have changed, the weapons may have changed, the enemies may have changed, but this advice still stands the test of time. You can go back to this codex, you can read, I'll give, put the whole thing in so if someone wants to read it, they can do. You can read the whole of this, and with a little bit of, you know, pass, you know, sort of patching into 8th edition, all this advice is still perfectly viable. This guy is the original Mordy and Glory channel. This was the original. This is what you would get back in the day. There was there was no going on to the amazing Mordy and Glory channel. There was none of that. This is your advice. Maybe you maybe there was a forum or two, but that was it. And there's some tactics here. Have your infantry up front, screening, infantry. Look how relevant these tactics are. Infantry screens, infantry screens, flanking units, support, fire support here. This is all relevant now. Still relevant now. Got some other cool stuff in here. Camo patterns. How you how you should mark your tanks up and your infantry up. I mean, that's a cool commissar model that is. Advice on personalizing your army. Take a Mordian hat, put it on a rattling. Use Necromunda models. They look they work great. And you had this guy with his Stalingrad themed army look at that, a little picture of him taking on some orcs just cool, very cool, and again it's a bit really, I mean this guy I think goes on about like uh, you know people, you know, this was considered like quite cheesy because he had three Lehman Russes and a Basilisk which when you think about it now there's no way he could take, <laughs> and a Griffin, that's fine, and he had an old, that's what the old school Sentinel looked like by the way guys that's a second edition Sentinel with an assault cannon and a couple more pictures. This guy is homemade. That's what that was a homemade Hydra. That was a homemade exterminator. And that's it. A few little pictures. Some guardsmen about to get absolutely boned by some uh, chaos guys. And then a description of, like different war zones of uh, what Macarius took on. So there you go, guys. That is it. That's a trip down memory lane. That is. So you can see how far we've, you know, how far we've come. Infantry squads are now forty points. There's multiple, multiple detachments. You know, it's uh, Warhammer has changed a lot. But uh, the crazy thing is, is even though the game may have changed, our core tactics, our core army principles, have never changed, and. Uh, if there's one thing that never changes about the Imperial Guard, it's this. Duty and honour. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this video. And I'll see you guys next time.